My name is Lydia Liu. Our book is called The Birth of Chinese Feminism, Essential Texts in Transnational Theory. We came upon this idea of translating some early Chinese feminists, primarily the work of He Yinzhen. He Yinzhen was born in 1884. Um, she lived very brief life. Um, she died around 1920. Um, the Qing Dynasty was overthrown in 1911. She lived through the dynastic changes and her ideas responded to a lot of the revolutionary ideas that were floating in her time. Also, we included some other influential intellectuals, male intellectuals, who participated in early Chinese feminism. Liang Qichou, a seminal text by him uh, on women's education, and Jin Tianhe, who was a late Qing intellectual, uh, who is now regarded as a pioneer in Chinese feminism. Well, one of the goals, I would say, is to debunk this idea that is very prevalent among Chinese uh, thinkers or even the Chinese public today, that um, China's earliest and the most important feminists are men. So we can't blame people for thinking that, um, yes, they were, they were the founding fathers of Chinese feminism, and yet, uh, once we go deeper into what they were saying, it was so true that not only were they, one, derivative, second, they weren't exactly the kind of feminist we today think of feminist to be, in the sense that they were more interested in saving China, saving the nation. They were more interested in um, shoring up their own masculinity than really helping the women and to bring women into uh, a better world. So we thought that it is about time that we, we kind of um, put a different idea out there, and that is there are other feminists in, um, in the same period, in the 1900s, who had much more radical and pro-women ideas than this man that we today think of as the fathers of Chinese feminism. Qing Zhen is really interesting because she is as much a feminist as she is an anarchist. And uh, two of her major uh, con conceptual uh, innovations, we could say, or two of her major concepts were uh, intertwined with these two streams of thought. One of them, which we actually in the book refuse to translate always is called nan nu, which in uh, Chinese is the sort of, we could call it in contemporary language, mashup of male female. Okay, it's the two words for male and female. Um, and it indicates uh, in a certain way, uh, and what we, wish it to indicate by not translating it, is that all social relations, all relations, uh, all historical social relations are always already a relationship between men and women. The other concept that she uses quite uh, frequently and that is extraordinarily important for her theorizing is uh, emerges as well from uh, a classical Chinese tradition of uh, understanding. It's called shengji, uh, livelihood. When you cross it with anarchism, you get a very uh, potent uh, critique of the system of private property and wealth. And so shengji, as in the way that society is completely, uh, where livelihood is completely conditioned by your relationship to private property, and nanyu, where your relationships are completely informed and shaped by your, uh, the, the male-female uh, uh, relationship, this forms the core of her understanding and her theoretical work. I would add that one of Hui Yingzhen's um, ideas is that she was not 
at all um, impressed by the progress made by European or American women or European American society. She thought that um, the factory system was uh, disastrous for the women workers, both in Japan and America. She also thought that the idea prevalent in Europe and America of conjugal love or that a husband and wife um, came together to get married because all of their equal love for each other was completely bogus and she didn't think that um, marriages in America were any less motivated by money and status and all of those calculations than they were in China. In America, we often expect a feminist theorist to have practical solutions. So if you don't like certain things, what are you going to do about it? But He Yingzhen was much more of a visionary in that she did not propose a lot of real action program. Yes, you know, tomorrow you can go to vote. Yes, tomorrow you can go and stand on the street corner and protest. But her ideas, the, the um, radicalness, the thoroughness of her critique um, was so energizing to us. What is so amazing about He Yingzhen's ideas is that she lived at a time when China really did not have a parliament, it did not have uh, any major factories other than a handful of textile mills in Shanghai. And yet the questions she raised about um, women, justice, and livelihood are so applicable to China today in the 21st century after you know, three decades of relentless drive to uh, market capitalism and uh, industrialization. It is so amazing that she foresaw the potential problems that China as a society today would face. One of the most amazing things since the book has come out is that um, a lot of our colleagues in, who works on South Asia or Middle East or Africa or Latin America came and told us that um, He Yingzhen is really, really special they can recognize that her concerns, the issues that she took on, resonated in uh, these other areas of the world that they work on. But they said that there is no other feminist, male or female, that they know of at the time who managed to come up with such a radical critique both in death and breath. So um, I think that she deserves to be better known, but ironically, because she was so radical, the Chinese themselves have forgotten about her. So she is not at all well known in China today, or nor in the Chinese-speaking world. So um, hopefully, the book will actually kind of recreate a kind of uh, interest in what she has to say. One of our really fondest hopes for the book is that our students will become enthused by this kind of thinking and this kind of uh, feminism, anarchism, radicalism, all sorts of isms, uh, but that they will become enthused by it and, uh, and, and follow up on, on the kind of research that it requires to continue to uncover and continue to make known uh, marginalized figures such as He Yingzhen, uh, and I'm sure, I don't know who they are, but I'm sure there are others out there waiting to be rediscovered. In other words, we wanted, to, we wanted He Yingzhen's thought to have a future.